I've managed to get a solid FPS boost in the Modern Warfare 3 beta on PC whilst maintaining incredibly crisp visuals and visibility, and today I'm going to show you the exact settings that I've used to do it. Starting in the display tab, full screen exclusive needs to be your selection for display mode. It will give you the best input latency in all cases. Full screen borderless. It might be able to keep up in certain scenarios and you can alt tab a little bit quicker with it. But if you're focused purely on performance, full screen exclusive is the way to go. Display monitor and adapter just needs to be set to the correct monitor and GPU, self-explanatory. And then screen refresh rate, make sure this is set to match the refresh rate of your monitor you're playing on. For me, that's 240, so I pick the nearest number, which is 239. You just want to pick whatever the nearest number is for your monitor. Display resolution, make sure you set this to the native resolution of your monitor. You don't need to come in here and do any downscaling and pulling this any lower. If you really do need to gain any FPS, we can do that in the quality tab a bit later on. Aspect ratio, leave it to automatic. And then VSync, make sure this is off. This will lead to potential screen tearing if you're on a lower refresh rate monitor. But once again, like full screen exclusive, it really helps with your input latency to make sure VSync is turned off. For your custom frame rate limit, a lot of people will just select unlimited. What I'd recommend is that you instead select custom, then click show more and then in here you can set your gameplay menu and out of focus frame rate limits independently for gameplay you can max this all the way out and just get the maximum fps you can for menu custom frame rate limit i'd recommend you set this to something which feels nice and smooth when you're doing your loadouts your classes or even your settings as you're doing it here uh, so for me 120 feels good uh, this way we're not pushing the game to its max in the menu for no reason and causing the rest of our system to lag outside of it. Then out of focus frame rate limit, which is the frame rate that the game will run at when you alt tab, you can bring this all the way down to something like 30 so that if I'm gonna alt tab and quickly check a, a class or a loadout or something I wanna copy over on my second monitor, I can come back in here. It, it means nothing to the actual game and it just makes the overall user experience of running with the game a lot better. You've then got the option to restart shaders preloading. If you have any weird stuttering or any kind of graphical issues, it could be because your shaders are corrupted, uh, which will typically install on your first time booting up the game after an update. If you need to redo that shader install, you can just click this and it will run back through from zero to 100%. Display gamma, you wanna set this to 2.2 if you are on a monitor, which most of us PC gamers will be. But if you are on a TV, make sure this is set to 2.4 so you get the correct display gamma. For your brightness, I'd recommend you bring this up to around 55 or 60. It really helps alleviate some of the problems with visibility in dark areas of the map. Maps on this, especially in the beta, like areas of high rise and favela, have really dark corners, and you want to make sure you can spot enemies as easy as possible. So just bring up that brightness to around one of those values. Focused mode, we can leave off. Then NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, you want to turn to either on or on plus boost. The difference here is dependent on what your GPU and CPU setup is. As you can see, for on plus boost over here, it says that GPU clock frequencies are kept high in CPU bound cases. A CPU bound case basically means your CPU is this strong and your GPU is much stronger. So it's your CPU that's holding back the GPU from its full potential. For a lot of PC gamers, you might have a much weaker CPU than a GPU, in which case you want to run on plus boost. However, for my scenario and for a lot of people who are a bit more kind of enthusiasts or have a much stronger PC overall and have a CPU that's near to their GPU, you can instead set this to on. If you are a bit if you're a bit confused, just try out both these settings in multiple games and see which one feels better for you in terms of input latency and FPS. Lastly, on the display tab, we have high dynamic range. You want to make sure this is off for when we're playing multiplayer. It can be nice to have it on when it comes to the campaign, when we get access to that, uh, to make the game look really nice and get some really good black levels and really good lighting. But for playing multiplayer and in cheap but for playing multiplayer and achieving really good visibility, HDR needs to be off. Moving to the quality tab now, quality presets, you can just leave this as whatever. It's gonna get overwritten by all the stuff we changed down here anyway. Render resolution, this determines what percentage of the native resolution we selected on the display tab are we actually gonna render the game out at. If you are dying for FPS, at the end of running through all these settings, you can come in here and potentially turn this down to something like 90 or 
80, but in most circumstances, leave this at 100% and don't touch it. Dynamic resolution is another way you can gain some FPS where it will actually set a target frame rate for you to hit and then will adjust the display resolution as you play. Once again though, I'd recommend that you start off by not touching this unless you need to for a little bit more FPS later on. Upscaling and sharpening, this holds all of our upscaling methods like DLSS and FSR that you've likely heard of, as well as Fidelity FX Cast Sharpening, which is gonna be my recommendation for most people. You can turn that on here, then click Show More, and then for the Cast Strength, which will set how sharp the image looks, I've found that 75 looks pretty good. I think going higher than 75 for me personally looks way too sharp. It doesn't have an effect on performance from what I've seen so far, so you don't need to worry about it. If you want to turn this higher, feel free to do so. I'm just giving my recommendation. However, if you want to gain some FPS, I will give another recommendation here, and that is FSR 2.1. This will bump your FPS by about maybe 15 to 20 or so, depending on the scenario you're in. Uh, Technically, the game does look a bit worse because we're actually lowering the resolution and then using an upscaling method to bring us back up to something that looks kind of similar. But you can try FSR 2.1 with ultra quality and it looks pretty much just as good as native no upscaling uh, with some slight bits you can notice. It's worth trying out. Maybe I'll do a video in depth on this when the full game comes out. So use either FSR 2.1 or Fidelity FX Cast for maximum visibility. For your anti-aliasing, in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, I always recommended you went for the Filmic SMAA T2X, which actually lowered your FPS a little bit. The reason I did this is there was this weird bug with uh, kind of fuzzy dots over all the textures in the game and the only way I could find to solve it was to turn on the filmic mode. However, that does seem to have been fixed in Modern Warfare 3 from what I've seen. So now I would recommend you just stick with the SMAA option so you can gain the couple of bit of FPS uh, over the filmic option. You then wanna click show more and change the anti-aliasing quality to normal. Uh, I found that there's quite a few settings in this game, once again, similar to Modern Warfare 2, where the lowest setting just looks really bad and by turning it up by just one setting you lose little to no fps but gain a hell of a lot in terms of visuals quality and visibility anti-aliasing quality is one of them so you want to select normal here for your vram scale target i haven't had time to go in and fully test this option just yet but basing on how modern warfare 2 worked it was usually better to turn this down because having it higher than you needed it to be would actually cause your game to stutter so i'm gonna run with what i ran in modern warfare 2 which was 50 what i'd recommend you do is you turn this all the way down to the lowest and then start to bring it up step by step until you have the smoothest running game possible but always start from the bottom not from the top because the top is not going to give you any benefits. Variable rate shading is a brand new setting to Modern Warfare 3. We didn't have this in MW2. What this does, as it says over here, is it activates a technique that improves performance at low visual cost by controlling where additional quality is needed in the image. To put this simply, when an image is rendered in front of you in the game, there's a certain amount of quality budget to the entirety of the image and by turning on variable rate shading some areas lose a bit of visuals or visibility uh, to gain you performance whilst keeping the bits of the screen that the game thinks are important uh, rendered in at maximum quality. I'm going to currently recommend that you leave this at off and you will need to reboot your game in order for this to kick in. I'm going to do some testing on this, maybe in the beta, maybe in the full release and see if this is a setting that can help us out. But right now, to make sure we aren't affecting our visibility, leave it off. Now guys, if you are finding these settings to be helpful for you today, then be sure to subscribe to the channel down below. It only takes one click in about five seconds, and then you'll have access to all of my content on Modern Warfare 3 moving forward. Far more settings videos coming out, things to do with config files, audio, gameplay, controller settings as well. I'll be covering it all here, so you do not want to miss it. Moving on to texture resolution, we want to turn this to low, so one above the bottom option. It's pretty much the exact same explanation as the anti-aliasing quality back up here where the textures on very low look horrific they really really get downgraded and it actually makes uh 
spotting enemies sometimes a little bit harder as well. So turning this up to low gets you a nice boost to your overall quality and visibility, and you don't really lose any FPS. So low is the best option. Then texture filter anisotropic or anisotropic filtering, as it's typically known in most other games. You can leave this on high. It just overall will improve how textures look throughout the game, especially when you're looking at surfaces at an angle, as it says over here, and it has little to no performance uh, drop by having this turned to the max. So leave this on high. Depth of field basically makes things that are further away from you look blurry. It's basically what happens in real life when you look at something really close to you, everything else in the background blurs. Not a good thing for a competitive multiplayer game, so definitely turn that off. Then detail quality level, which sets the quality of objects and small ground elements like foliage, rocks, and various decals. You definitely want to turn this to low. We don't care about the quality of little things like that. It's all just visual uh, clutter anyway. So turn this to low. You will gain some very nice performance from doing so. For particle resolution, make sure this is on very low. This sets mostly the quality of fire and explosions in game. It does make them look really bad, I will say, but it does save you a pretty solid amount of FPS. You can see the GPU impact is medium, and that's because with the all of the explosions and effects happening on your screen, it can really tank your performance having this turned anywhere above. So very low is my recommendation. Bullet impacts is completely personal preference. You can leave these on or off, whether you like to see the bullet impacts on walls when you shoot them. I'm just gonna leave it on because I think it's kind of cool. But then persistent effects with a medium effect on your VRAM. This is similar to bullet impacts, but instead of bullets leaving holes on walls, this is explosions and fire leaving burn marks on walls and stuff. This will have an effect on overall VRAM usage and therefore performance, as well as actually adding far more visual clutter to the game that we really don't need. So turn this off. Shader quality is all to do with lighting and how lighting hits surfaces. I'm unfortunately going to have to say turn this all the way to low. It will make your game look a lot more flat overall because you don't have some of that depth that lighting gives you, but it has a really big effect on FPS. It did in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 as well, so low is the recommendation here. On-demand texture streaming enables you to download high quality textures as you play. This is a big no, partly because running these crazy textures is gonna affect performance, but also you're actually using internet bandwidth while you're playing an online game. Just a bad mixture, a bad recipe for disaster. So turn this off. For local texture streaming quality, you can actually leave this at normal. It has no effect on FPS going from normal to low and you just lose a little bit of visibility. Uh, it actually sort of affects your textures in game as well. It makes textures at farther areas look a lot worse when you turn this down to low. So leaving this at normal is actually a really good option for you. Then moving on to shadow quality. It's got the same explanation as the texture and the anti-aliasing above. You want to put it one higher than the lowest, so that would be low in this scenario, because very low shadows look really, really bad, and low shadows look better without really losing you any FPS. For screen space shadows, which are purely the shadows that cast on local surfaces, which are basically on your hands and your weapon as you move around the map, we do not care about those. Shadows are pretty hefty to the system, so we definitely want to turn these off. Ambient occlusion then is all about soft shadows that are generated when objects intersect each other. So when you've got one box up against the wall, so when you've got like a box that's pushed up against the wall, you'll get like a soft shadow in the corner where they meet. And it's another thing we don't care about. So we are gonna turn those off. The next two things are screen space reflections and static reflection quality. We are gonna turn both of these to the lowest settings. So that's off and low because we don't care about reflections. Tessellation sets how geometry looks on certain surfaces, how realistic and nice things look. I would have said turn this to off and just gain some FPS, but you actually don't really gain anything from turning this down. And your image just looks a lot more flat and unpleasing to be honest. So I'd recommend you actually just leave this on near and uh, make the game feel like a 2023 release rather than something from back in the day. Terrain memory 
is a really big pitfall. So many people will look at this and just say, oh, it's all to do with memory size and stuff. I'm just going to turn this down to the minimum. Actually, just leave this on max. It has no effect on FPS whatsoever, and it makes textures look a hell of a lot better. It specifically says here that it's all to do with distant terrain textures. Believe me, leave this on max. It will make your game look better and you won't lose any FPS. Volumetric quality, on the other hand, will lose you a lot of FPS. It's all to do with lighting, fog and clouds in the sky. You're gonna have to turn this to low to get a five to 10 FPS boost on certain maps. It really is that big a deal. Make sure this is on low. Deferred physics quality, bit of a weird name. It's just the quality of water. We are gonna turn this to off to just get the simplest looking water in game. Whether this affects visibility of enemies who are actually swimming in water, we'll have to see when Warzone 2 comes out to see if this setting needs to be set at anything higher for a competitive advantage. In Modern Warfare 3, at the moment, make sure it's off. Weather grid volumes, you can turn these off as well. We don't care about the quality of weather effects. And then water quality down here, similar to deferred physics quality, we can just set this to default once again to get the simplest, most performance efficient looking water in the game. Lastly, we've got the view tab. I would recommend you turn your field of view up to at least 110 as a minimum. We're in 2023 now. Everyone has access to field of view and you need to have a high field of view to get as much information in as possible. Me personally, I actually play this all the way on 120 and I'd recommend you work to that as soon as possible. Then ADS field of view, this is going to affect uh, whether when you ADS do you zoom all the way into a default 80 FOV or do you remain with a nice 120 FOV? We want to remain at 120 FOV and keep a nice wide view, so we want to select affected. Then weapon field of view and vehicle field of view. I would say vehicle field of view you always want to have on wide because uh, when you're playing ground war in this game, you want to make sure you can see as much as you can when you're in a vehicle. Weapon field of view though, which is basically how far away your weapon looks from you. It's honestly personal preference. I ran wide all the way through Modern Warfare 2, so I'm going to stick with that, but try each of these out and see which one works for you. World and weapon motion blur, turn both of these off. No one likes motion blur. It makes it really hard to see enemies, so it's a no-brainer. Same thing with film grain, turn this all the way to zero. Horrible, horrible, horrible. You definitely don't want film grain on. For your first person camera movement, it says over here that this is also with motion sickness, but you definitely want to turn this down to 50%. The less camera movement and camera shake happening on screen, the overall better visibility you're gonna get in game. Spectator camera, I would put this to game perspective rather than the helmet cam. I don't even know why the helmet cam's still in the game. We want to have that first person view of our teammates when we go down in search and destroy or in war zone. And then the last one here, inverted flashbang. This is basically gonna set whether when a flashbang goes off, is it a bright white screen or is it a low black effect? I like to just stick with it off because that way when a flashbang goes off, I know it's a flashbang. I'm just used to knowing that. But if you find that that really bright effect has uh, a bit of a horrid effect with your eyes, then you can turn this to on and get a black screen instead. And there we go, guys. The best settings for the Modern Warfare 3 beta for maximum FPS and visibility in game. The next thing you need to watch is this video where I run you through the best NVIDIA control panel settings that are going to give you even further boosts and advantages over people who haven't gone and watched this yet.